Hello everyone, it's time to talk about Half-Life Source again. We have a lot to get through, so I've divided this video into separate parts. Feel free to skip around to whichever one you find most interesting. First and foremost, I'd like to sincerely thank anyone who watched and shared the original video. The broken state of this game needs to be talked about more often. Furthermore, many of you took to the YouTube comments and Steam forums to provide me with more bugs or corrections to the ones I had already detailed. Let's have a look at what you contributed. Guy on a chair made a video showcasing more glitches that I didn't show. It's also pretty funny. It made me discover something new. Want to skip all of We've Got Hostiles? Simple. Just whack this guy with a crowbar and bypass the whole chapter. Thank you to Super JXD, Chief Eric, E8144818, and the You Are Dead for pointing out that the tentacle is harmless. Thank you to Mr. Mario and the You Are Dead for pointing out that the issue in residue processing can be fixed by disabling multi-core rendering. And thank you to the Gizmo Guy for explaining why the issue happens in the first place. Thank you to Fawcett Gaming, Sir Jake Jenkins, and I gave up 17.576 seconds ago for pointing out the sound issues when enabling the HD models. Thank you to Ice Earth 1231 for pointing out the issue with glove triangles when holding a revolver. Thank you to Tristan Dust Stuff for pointing out the issues in the armory before Zen. And thank you to Pyrospirit for pointing out additional issues in the hazard course. Thanks to Bitrain, I was able to test Half-Life Source version 2187. This is Half-Life Source as it was released to the public in 2004. No post-launch patches, nothing that would be broken by later Source Engine updates. This is consumer version 1.0, the way it came from the hands of Valve into the hands of gamers. Let's bring this version more than a decade into the future and take a closer look at it. Much like my overview of bugs for the current version of Half-Life Source, I will be separating the list by map specific issues and issues present during your entire playthrough. Let's get started. The slippery water next to the open elevator shaft has some rendering issues. When playing on a rail, one of the barnacle tongues disappears when you move a certain distance from it. This is caused by a map optimization issue. Playing apprehension, it became clear to me that you have the ability to almost levitate on the water, still being able to walk without the game realizing that you're submerged. I also found that when placed at a certain spot and looking at a certain angle, the screen will start to smear as you move and rotate your view. In this section of questionable ethics, alien grunts can fall through the platforms and raise them.
This version of the game still has the charred remains that can be found on questionable ethics. The section in which a door is blown open, followed by alien grunts, has some inconsistencies. Sometimes the aliens will explode into Gibbs when shot, and sometimes they'll simply turn into ragdolls. When testing this issue, I thought they were turning into ragdolls because of splash damage instead of taking a direct hit. But testing with the crosshair and making sure that every hit was direct still had this inconsistency. The section in which Gordon has to climb out of a tunnel that has a detonated satchel charge has no fire effect. This specific area of this specific map has several points at which, when pressing up against a certain surface and looking in a certain direction, will remove a lot of level geometry. When doing the teleportation puzzle in Lambda Complex, touching a wall when on a carrier will make the player stuck while the carrier keeps moving beneath their feet, making them fall and take damage. Now on to some general issues. The Glock has 18 bullets instead of the standard 17. Firing animations for every weapon will hiccup when firing straight up. The flashlight in this game doesn't work in all directions. It'll work perfectly fine in a 180 degree area, but not the other. This becomes especially annoying when climbing through dark ventilation shafts, as the flashlight will sometimes not render in the direction you're supposed to be moving. Anti-aliasing also doesn't work properly. Two times and four times anti-aliasing seem to work fine. However, six times anti-aliasing yields the same result as disabling it altogether. I don't know how well I'll be able to demonstrate this since it's a compressed video that YouTube will then recompress, so I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. As we can see, Half-Life Source was always a flawed game. Since the day it released, it wasn't perfect. 
Even if it was, the fact that it disappointed its audience by being such a bare-bones conversion meant that the project started out on the wrong foot. The fact that it was buggy only worsened the situation. For a while, it looked as if the future of Half-Life Source was bright. I remember reading update logs that mentioned how the Glock now had the correct amount of bullets per clip, or back in 2013 when they released a beta branch of the game for people to test the latest fixes. All seemed well until that same year when Valve rolled out the Steam Pipe update. Steam Pipe brought about a major change in the way that Valve and Steam delivered content to the player, and the way that games were stored on a user's computer. Before, when a third-party developer needed to push an update to their game, it would have to go through Valve. This is similar to the way Sony and Microsoft issue updates to games on their platforms. Steam Pipe allowed developers to push their updates directly onto users without having to contact Valve first. Steam Pipe also allowed the user to download a game faster than before. It was an even bigger deal for Valve's own games, as downloading custom content from multiplayer servers was now easier, game boot times would be faster, and, most significantly, engine updates would be spread across all titles. This meant that as Valve developed engine improvements to Source, they could be rolled out to every title. However, for all the good the Steam Pipe update did, it caused a lot of chaos. First and foremost, it broke several mods. Many were lucky enough to receive updates that would fit the new system, but countless were left behind. Even Steam's own support page for the Steam Pipe update focused a great deal on fixing issues with pre-existing mods and custom content. Half-Life Source was one of the many casualties claimed by the update, as Valve never went back to check or fix any issues caused by years of engine improvements. Does this mean there's no way to play Half-Life? Of course not. The original Gold Source title is still available and more than deserving of your time. Heck, it's not even the end of playing the original Half-Life on the Source engine, thanks to Black Mesa. But Half-Life Source itself is in a dire state of disrepair at the moment. All hope is still not lost, however. A small team have come together and formed the Half-Life Source Update Group, dedicated to fixing Half-Life Source once and for all. They're a small group of independent modders who need all the support they can get. Anyone watching who cares about the future of this game is encouraged to check out their Steam group page. So, it's conclusion time. Again. I'd like to finally put Half-Life Source to rest as I can't bring myself to look at it anymore. Though it makes me sad that the game is as broken as it is, the more hopeful side of me waits for the day that people with enough dedication and free time give it the set of fixes it deserves. Being one of the few people to expose the issues currently present in this game and starting a conversation, I feel that I've done my part and it's time to pass the torch. Hopefully this video will someday fall into the depth of obsolescence and prove that for Half-Life Source, much like its original counterpart, the community is its greatest asset. Until then, thank you for watching.